All right, uh, hello everyone, and welcome to the H3VR mapping guide. Today, I'm just going to go over how to make a bare bones sandbox scene that you can build off of for your own projects. So, a few prerequisites for this uh, you're going to need Unity 5.6.3 P4, and you're going to need a meat kit project that's already been set up. Uh, if you don't have that, you can go look at uh, Devin's uh, episode 1 meat kit guide to see how to set that up. And you're also going to need to have Atlas, the mapping tools, imported. So uh, once you've got all of that, uh, we're just going to jump into building the basic scene. So. Right. So once you have your uh, basic scene, first you can remove the camera. We aren't going to need that for obvious reasons. And then uh, for every H3VR scene, there are a couple of requirements that every scene needs. And the first of those uh, is the scene settings override object, which I am actually going to grab from the Atlas sample package. Uh, in a future video, I might take a look at and show off all the different components that come with this because there's, there's a lot in there. But what we need is this scene settings override object. So you can just copy that and then we'll paste that into our scene. So this comes with, these are all of your different settings that uh, will affect your map. So things like the different locomotion options, uh, does your player take damage, their default IFF, which is like the teams that the SOSIGs operate off of, is your ammo infinite, stuff like that. And the next thing that we're going to need for the map, uh, it actually comes on our scene settings object, is a FVR reverb system script, which is how the reverb for things like gunshots get handled. Uh, so you're going to need a reverb environment to go along with this system. Uh, you want to drop in the uh, environment into your default environment, and then you can set this back to 1. I don't know why I was at 5. And then put that in the list of your environments as well. And then in our environment itself, you can set the different types. Uh, they obviously will sound different. So outside open is different from an indoor shooting range, for example. Pick whichever one you think will suit your map best. So now we can get to building the scene itself. Uh, I like to keep a parent object for all the map's geometry just to help stay organized. And for all of the geometry in your scene, so for now we'll just have a basic plane, set it to something like 5x5, five five, just give, it, give us a little bit more room. Uh, for every single piece of geometry that's going to be in your level, uh, it first off needs to have some kind of collider. Uh, I'm going to remove the mesh collider and replace it with a box collider. It, this doesn't really matter because it's a plane, but for more complex objects, you really want to try and use only box colliders because the collision is really, really physics expensive. So it's just going to be more and more taxing on your map and way harder to run. So use box colliders whenever you can. And then next, uh, it needs to be set to static and put on the environment layer. Otherwise, your player is just going to fall straight through it. So once we've got that, that is, you, you could export this as a finished map right now, but there are a few other things that I want to show how to do first. So first off, uh, we're going to add a, uh, is it prefab? Yeah, prefab spawn points. And then in here is where you can place things like item spawners and your destructo bins. Uh, we'll just call this the spawner for now. Uh, in my like experience, the item spawner and item, item spawner new don't really have a difference. They both spawn the new item spawner. I don't know why that option is there. I don't know if that's something just on my system. So play with that, figure it out yourself. Uh, we'll duplicate this and we'll also put down a destructo bin. So that way we can get rid of the stuff we spawn. And just to make this a bit easier to see, I'm going to add a floor material. And for all materials in your scene, you're going to need them set to alloy 
and some kind of alloy, usually just the core. These will come included with your either meat kit or atlas, I don't remember which, just install them both and you'll have this. You need the al alloy for things like flashlights and lasers and a, a couple other things, I don't remember. You need these for the map to work correctly. Uh, the, Devin has a tutorial that goes more in depth on this, uh, so go watch that. For now, I'm just going to be adjusting the tint so I can get a easier on the eyes color, just a gray, and rename that and we'll put that on our floor. So there we go. One last thing that I forgot to add when we first made this was the spawn point for the player. So the player spawn point, and you're also gonna want the reset point for the player on there as well. So whenever you fall like out of the scene, if I were to run all the way to the edge and then fall off, I'll reset back here instead of just falling through the void forever so spawn point and there we go and uh, one last thing i've added a couple of cubes just to break up the gray plane a little bit and again they're box colliders they've got the environment layer and they're set to static so make sure whatever you add it has those three things Right, so before we can move on to building and exporting the map out of Unity, there are three things we have left to do, which is first off to bake the navigation, so that's like your nav mesh that Sosegs walk around on so they know where to go. As long as everything's marked static that you need static, then this should just do itself. So there we go, it'll avoid the... anything not in blue it'll avoid, and anything in blue it can walk on. Uh, then your occlusion, this is for larger maps to occlude part of it, it helps with performance. I'm not very good at setting it up, I usually just leave it at the defaults. Uh, if you know what you're doing, then you can change it. And then lastly is your lighting tab, which I'm, I'm just not even going to get into, uh, because most of this goes way over my head. I just click buttons until I think it looks good, I'm not qualified to talk on this. Uh, one thing I will say though is you want to avoid using real-time lighting and you want to try and use baked because it's a lot more performant and you also don't want real-time global illumination. Besides that, everything else can be figured out through other tutorial series or just by asking around in the H3VR modding discord which I'll link in the description. So once you've got those three things done, now it's time to build your scene and export it into H3. So for that, you're going to need a build profile, which we can create by going to meet kit build profile. Uh, we'll just call this test scene profile. It doesn't matter. Uh, and then drop it into there. You're going to get a bunch of red error messages. That's fine. We'll be filling those out and getting rid of those. Uh, you're also going to need a build item and then your atlas scene because we're exporting a scene and not an item so we can also just call this test scene atlas and then in here you want to fill out this first um, you're going to drop your scene into the scene file the scene name just whatever you want it to be called test scene uh, the game mode for now uh, Unless you're making something for take and hold, you can you want to just set this as sandbox. Let's see, I, lowercase. Make sure it's all lowercase for sandbox. Just put this as sandbox as well. Uh, the author is yourself, uh, and then the thumbnail. You can either create this or just put something random. I'd really recommend creating this because this is what's going to show up. Uh, like on the uh, the little tablet for selecting your scene so make something that looks nice uh, you could do this either in GIMP or Photoshop it doesn't matter for now I'm just gonna drop in a random texture that I've got so we'll just throw in a let's see a sample taken hold and then the description this is also gonna show up on the little tablet put whatever you think fits it so test scene now back in your build profile this is all the data that will get sent to Thunderstore and uploaded there 
So uh, we're going to need the package name, which will be uh, test underscore scene. Uh, the version, we'll just put this as 0.0.1 .0 for now. You can change this version and update it as you make changes to the maps. And then the icon is what's going to show up on Thunderstore's page. So if you want to make it something appealing uh, for now, we'll just leave it as an FVR icon because I don't feel like making one for this tutorial. Uh, the readme, this is just going to be a markdown file that you make. So just over here, we'll go readme, change this to a .md, yes. And back in Unity, once it shows up, you can go here, just drop that, oh, just drop that in, and there you go. Uh, the author, you're also just going to put as yourself. Right, now you're going to need to add either a description, if you want. I'm just going to leave this blank, because I'm not actually going to be uploading this. And then you're going to need a dependency, which in this case is Atlas. Uh, you can find this on the Thunderstore page for Atlas, or just copy it from here. It's whatever version of Atlas is being used. In my, in my case, it's 1.0.2, but it might get updated in the future to 1.1 or something like that. So go find the most recent version on Thunderstore and paste it in here. Um, if you're using any other things like script libraries or any anything else, the dependency tags can always be found on Thunderstore in the description of the mod. So just go look there and you'll find them. In this case though, the only thing we need is Atlas. And then strip namespaces, you can just leave this disabled because it doesn't really affect much. I'll let you look into that on your own. Uh, you're going to want to apply the harmony patches. It Again, for like basic maps, this won't affect much. And then lastly, we need a build item, which is actually going to contain our scene and everything else that you might be building. So, you're going to head to Meet Kit. Uh, oh, never mind. Never mind. My bad. Uh, you're just going to drop in your Atlas scene into your build item list. And then the build action, these are three, di three different actions that your map can take. It can either just build the files into uh, your asset bundles folder, which is really useless when the second one exists, which will copy it to a profile, which makes it a lot easier to test. So if I go to select profile folder, then up to my R2 mod man, then to H3VR, and then into my mods. It'll automatically find it and place it in there. So it makes it really easy to test out inside of R2 mod man. Uh, and then the last one, this is good for your final, final upload to Thunderstore for publishing your mod, is to create a Thunderstore package. So you just drag and drop the zip file and it's all ready for you. In my case, I'm just going to leave this on copy to profile. And then lastly, we're going to head over to our meat kit build. Um, if you see some of your stuff is gone, you can just refresh that by going to none and then back to your, uh, your build profile that you made. And then I'm going to have to reselect my R2 mod man folder, go to data, H3 profiles, my mods, and there we go. And then just click build. This can take a little bit, so just wait until the last build time is updated. So as you can see from the build timer, uh, it's finished building into my R2 Modman folder. So I'm going to jump into VR and we'll test this out. Right, so I'm inside of VR and if I turn around and look behind me, we have the test scene picture that we chose for our icon. As you can see, test scene made by local. It's a test scene. And inside of here, if you look around, we have the item spawner, which, let's see, I'm just going to make an. You got your weapons on the custom map that you've built. 
the Destructo bin doesn't seem to spawn, but this is more of an Atlas issue than something that we messed up, so that's that's fine. You can flip through the different options till you find the Destructo bin. Uh, if I just go ahead and spawn a Sosig, throw in on a couple of them, and they die just fine. Just like the So, uh, this is gonna be it for the video. Uh, I hope this has helped at least one of you out there. Uh, I, in a future video, I might show how to put together a take and hold scene, or just take a look at the, uh, take a look at the item spawner, or not item spawner, uh, the sample scene, Jesus. Uh, but, I don't know. You're, it, it's, it's all generally the same idea as what we did here just with a different template and different requirements for the map so you can either ask around in the h3 mapping discord or just figure it out yourself so uh that'll be it for me thank you for watching and i'll see you soon